Anastasia Mitushina introduced myself, and you know that I am not a theoretician. I'm a practical, practical uh, worker, and uh, now I will speak about my long-standing uh, practical experience. Anastasia mentioned several very large scale exhibition projects that I worked on in the 90s when we still have opportunities and we had funds. Exhibitions were not very expensive, but I would like to mention several other projects of the 90s because they are closely connected with the place I work now and with the collections that we are going to deal in. Uh, those were exhibitions uh, devoted uh, to a uh, very serious professional analysis of uh, local art, of the totalitarian art, uh, such exhibition as a communism, uh, uh, as a factory of dream in Frankfurt that we made together with uh, Boris Grossman and that gave me a lot of experience to work with such a prominent thinker and curator. And uh, there was, uh, the, the last exhibition was uh, Socialist uh, Realisms that we prepared together with Matthew uh, Bowen in 2000, 2011 in Rome. I mentioned these exhibitions because they are closely connected with the subject I am going to speak about now. And this is the relationship of those who make exhibition policies uh, and uh, the uh, uh, audience, uh, how we are to lead the audience, uh, to lead the public, and to arrange projects uh, that are wanted by the public. Uh, Anastasia mentioned the figure of 200,000 uh, people. Uh, those uh, were the, uh, th this is the number of people who visited uh, the exhibition Amazons of Avant-Garde, uh, and there were only 60 uh, paintings, but it was visited by 900,000 people. I would like to mention one more exhibition with the record number of visitors. Uh, that was uh, the uh, exhibition Russia with an exclamatory mark in Guggenheim that was visited by 420,000 uh, people there and that was uh, the uh, best visited uh, uh, exhibition for the entire history of this New York Museum. In the last 12 years, I was responsible for the exhibition policy in the museums of the Moscow Kremlin, where we uh, held, uh, where we arranged very interesting exhibition programs that were highly praised by the public and by the critics. And several times, these exhibitions became ten top, uh, uh, entered ten top of the uh, world. Uh, and uh, they were top five of the world, uh, we may say. Of course, uh, uh, each of them won uh, in its own section, decorative and applied arts, oriental arts, uh, but they uh, were in the first uh, lines of the rating. As Anastasia said, uh, uh, for six years I have been uh, working as a director of uh, Ross Izo, uh, that is now arranging large interdisciplinary intermuseum uh, projects for being shown in Moscow, in Russia, and abroad. Working in the 90s and in the uh, 90s as an invited uh, curator, I uh, thought a lot about for whom these exhibitions are arranged. And this is a difficult question. You try to present uh, this or that uh, artistic uh, phenomenon. You choose uh, displays uh, to uh, supply the message that uh, you would like to send. You are creating a very complex intellectual project, but at the same time you understand that the idea of the museum is to be uh, very uh, simple because uh, visitors are very different and each visitor is to uh, understand it and share uh, 
uh, this position, your position uh, with himself. Yeah? So, and the exhibition should arouse uh, certain emotions. Uh, of course, probably I'm a bit traditionalist uh, in uh, this respect. Uh, and my experience is, uh, first of all, the experience of a classical, traditional uh, museum exhibitions, although the approach was not always classical and traditional, but I won't speak about experimental uh, projects. Uh, and uh, uh, I have never dealt in uh, uh, exhibitions of contemporary art. Coming back uh, to how to make an exhibition for which uh, uh, you may be proud and that could be visited by the maximum number of people, well, you know that each exhibition is uh, an uh, incredibly hard effort, exhausting and multi-year effort if we speak about serious exhibition concepts. And uh, I share the opinion that when making such projects, you shouldn't be led by the public. Uh, you shouldn't exploit the wrong myths uh, and entertain the public in a vulgar way. The idea is to help people who are far, who are very remote from art, uh, to know more about it, to push them uh, forward, to develop an interest for art, uh, to educate them, and to uh, improve their taste. Probably I speak about very trivial things, but I think it is very important to reiterate it uh, today uh, because uh, the uh, visitors, the viewers, are changing changing due to the changes in the intellectual level. And now we must think very seriously how attract the views and at the same time to educate them. So uh, working for 10 years uh, in the Moscow Kremlin allowed me to formulate uh, the real uh, exhibition policy. You know, until 2002, nobody looked at the mu uh, muse Kremlin museums as a serious exhibition platform. Uh, we have uh, Natalia uh, Sabolenka. I, I invited her to the first exhibition in the Moscow Kremlin when I came there. So the uh, 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 opening of the exhibition was visited by five people. Two of them were my guests. Uh, that was the uh, situation. But at the end of the 90s uh, and uh, in the first decade of the 20th century, so sometimes we had 2,000, uh, 3,000 uh, visitors a day. Well, so I don't think uh, that uh, uh, any other uh, museum can brag of such uh, density uh, of visitors per one square meter uh, of uh, uh, the museum space. And these uh, exhibitions were of very high quality, you know, and I can advertise this project because I don't work in the Moscow Kremlin any longer. But my work in the uh, Kremlin uh, museums, uh, uh, while we uh, had a very strong competition from the regular uh, exhibitions, many people come to the uh, Kremlin uh, to see the regular exhibitions in the armory chamber, uh, in the churches of the Kremlin. Uh, they they are not interested uh, in uh, one of exhibitions, uh, but we counted people who came to us, and uh, the work there made me think very seriously uh, whom uh, we uh, look to uh, as far as visitors are concerned. It was not very simple to work out the program of exhibition pro. Uh, uh, programs of exhibitions uh, to work out new projects uh, when we showed really something new, uh, something unusual. We gave an opportunity uh, for the viewers to see uh, really uh, uh, objects of great prominence, uh, uh, objects with, inter with an interesting story and in that could enlighten the view. One of the most interesting series of exhibitions was the program of um, uh, uh, King's uh, Treasures uh, in the Kremlin uh, that uh, was uh, presented by Obzhedar. 
they showed the rarities uh, from the uh, ruling uh, king's houses of uh, Europe, uh, uh, India, and China. And each exhibition uh, showed uh, the idea of treasure, treasure uh, that is typical of this or that country. Of course, some exhibitions were not uh, uh, popular. Sometimes the exhibitions were really uh, great, uh, but uh, the views were not very interesting. Interested, uh, for example, the exhibition "Believe and Power" was very interesting. It showed the balance of belief and power uh, uh, during the reign of Ivan the Terrible in Russia, and it was visited only by 30,000 uh, uh, people. Uh, 30,000 people and 10 times more people visited the uh, exhibition of uh, Faberge. Uh, that is just the uh, comparison uh, between uh, the attendance uh, of exhibitions. Analyzing the work that we did in the uh, Kremlin museums, I understand very well that, first of all, we worked uh, for the viewers, uh, for the sake of the viewers, uh, for the attraction of the viewers. We tried to educate the viewer. We didn't go down to his or her, to their level. All the projects were based on very serious scientific research, but they always uh, uh, considered the fact that the public should see uh, something new, should understand uh, new things, and we shouldn't make our story uh, too complicated. Uh, that's why we removed all the details that uh, could be uh, uh, written in books, yeah, but shouldn't be used uh, in the museum tours. Now the question as to whom uh, the project is to be oriented is important, especially in Russia. We have many examples, uh, and you know of them, of wonderful exhibitions that were not visited uh, by many people after the opening. We may say that the public is uh, uh, not very knowledgeable and is not very interested So uh, we, we uh, have examples. You remember uh, the last uh, project, uh, the R Romanovs uh, in the uh, Manej Hall, and there were uh, hours, uh, there were lines uh, uh, of people trying to get there. You, but the organizers uh, were wise enough. They found a certain niche which they filled up and that we ignored. Of course, we cannot follow the uh, simplest uh, expectations uh, of the public, uh, but still we shouldn't forget about the mainstream viewers, mass viewers. Now I would like to pass over to more a specific uh, uh, description of uh, what Rosezo is doing today uh, together with the practice of museum work that I'm doing. The uh, goal uh, that we have uh, is as follows. How can you arrange an exhibition on the basis of the government funds for Moscow or for the Russian Federa for, for Russian regions or for showing abroad so that could, could be of interest to the viewers, could promote local art and uh, be of higher artistic standard. So how to make this project a curator's one and not just a succession of uh, displays? how to promote such projects, uh, how to work with mass media, how to attract sponsorship money for this purpose. We understand very well that today there is no opportunity, there is no need to count only on the government funding. Today we have very good opportunities to raise considerable uh, sums, uh, amounts from sponsors. Uh, 
So I will give an example of several uh, projects of 2014 that will be shown in Russia and abroad. I will show how we tackle these problems. Uh, first of all, a few words about our organization, Ros Izo. Ros Izo is an uh, institution was set up 55 years ago and uh, was called Ros Izo Propaganda. The main goals were to arrange exhibitions, to acquire uh, works of art for Russian museums after the this after the, the uh, disintegration of the uh, uh, USSR. We merged with uh, Vucetich uh, Studio, where uh, they. Uh, implemented huge projects. Uh, so Ros Izo inherited a, a unique collection of the Minister of Culture uh, archives, uh, which at uh, that time acquired a, a, large, a large number of uh, works uh, for the uh, large exhibition of the 30s uh, Russian industry. And this exhibition opened only in 1939. And this collection of paintings is unique. It is a unique material to research the methods uh, uh, of uh, political leadership over uh, art process in the 30s. There are about 200 uh, pieces of work uh, of, uh, of art, uh, meaning documents, uh, paintings. Uh, uh, then uh, it was uh, uh, in, uh, in the 30s and 40s, uh, the collection was complemented by uh, portraits of Stalin, by portraits of members of the Politburo, and other thematic uh, paintings uh, showing uh, the same people. And after 1953, uh, uh, all uh, these uh, uh, works were uh, taken from the museums and sent to the archives. At the same time, uh, the uh, works of uh, Russian avant-garde were uh, sent uh, to the archives uh, as well. And uh, then uh, in the 70s, some of the painters uh, uh, defected uh, uh, abroad, and their paintings were also removed from museums and sent to the archives. And there were such artifacts, uh, like, for example, uh, paintings by Kazimir Malevich that was uh, passed over to the Tretikov Gallery and is now uh, shown at the exhibition Malevich and Russian avant-garde in Bonn. There were also paintings, uh, 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 there were uh, portraits of Stalin by uh, Gerasimov and Albandian and graphic works by Tsilkov Zaborov who emigrated from the USSR. In the 90s and in 90s, Ros Izor uh, was an operator of large exhibition projects on behalf of the Ministry of Culture, uh, including uh, organization of a very interesting show of exhibitions within the Festival Yevropali 2005. There was a, a practice uh, that I'm coming back now uh, to invite uh, uh, prominent curators uh, and uh, Yevropal included uh, several strong curators' projects. Uh, one of them was a, a project by Yekaterina Djogot, and the Belgians recognized this festival as the best one for the last decade. But later on, at the end of 2000, this organization somehow was hidden in the shadow. They stopped being the active player. Um, in the uh, exhibition stage. But the need in such institution like center of uh, preparation of large-scale exhibition projects to show in Russia and abroad was really high. And I was suggested to become the CEO and to make the rebranding of Rossizo. It's clear that the main task today is not simply to uh, provide organizational texture for the exhibition programs. The most difficult and the most complicated and challenging is to develop original concepts for the program. 
that could uh, be used as a presentation, as a representation of the national art. We were given the task. Yes, you can uh, skip some slides. So this is the collection, the art of 1970s and 1980s, something from Aragonian. And now, please, I would like you to, to ask you to stop here and let me tell you a short story about three exhibitions that were prepared for these six months, and they were either already launched in Moscow or abroad, or they are under the preparation. Right now, you see several works of Viktor Popkov, whose exhibition in the Academy of Arts was launched at the end of 2013. And uh, right now, it takes place in Venice, in Kafoska, in the framework of the year Russia Italy. We made it very fast within several months, that were the circumstances. Of course, I should admit that the halls of the Academy of Arts were too cozy for this exhibition and for this artist. But we received an interesting feedback, and in particular, reassessments of the uh, works of this uh, artist and so called official art of 1970s, 60s, uh, particularly that part uh, that used to be called the uh, style. The task was to look at this personality and this very strong, very interesting artist with all our experience and to identify what is relevant in his works, relevant for young visitors or maybe for the generation that still recollects Popkov's works on the old USSR exhibitions. And next slide, please. When we looked more down the way at his pieces of art, his works, and today we can decide the, uh, using works from the state museums, works that are very well known and they deserve to be looked at by different manner. Now we have an opportunity to uh, display also the things that the artist um, made for himself and uh, they were kept in his workshop about his sudden and ridiculous death and right now they are in private collections so it became clear that this is absolutely a social artist and his art this is a reflection of the nerve of doubts and the pain of the time and this is very relevant to contemporary visitor and these things that nobody had ever seen like picture Yalta that you see on the screen now, sometimes became a certain key uh, to the very interesting, very famous things. Yes, I'm always finalizing, decoding their hidden secrets, tragic sense, meaning. Also, I would like to introduce one more project. We made it for Saratov. Uh, this is exhibition, the image of Oriental image in the Russian art, first part of 1920th century, of 20th century. Usually, uh, what is sent to the regional museums are the exhibitional projects that uh, is made by this or that capital museum based upon their permanent collection. We decided to try to make interesting mix exhibition that would uh, uh, meet the collection of Saratov Museum where they have uh, pretty amazing things of Boris Mosatov, Pavel Kuznetsov, Elena Bebutova. With that, we wanted to show not only very bright and interesting visual images but also to make it clear what it meant for Russian artists before revolution and in post-revolution period, uh, this topic, oriental topic, and we found out that the topic of the East appeared to be also quite a distant topic because later on for 1920s, 1930s, you see these examples now, 
this topic of the East or simply uh, moving to the Asian region was the only opportunity to continue what uh, they were doing, what could be called art, and to survive. Right now you see wonderful works of Alexander Volkov from the collection of the museum. And we finalized this exhibition with the works of Raphael Falk. Robert Falk, I'm sorry, Robert Falk, says the speaker, who lived in Samarkand in the 1940s. It was evacuation uh, in the period of Second World War. And his lectures and his uh, training sessions, master classes, uh, were very impressive for Surikov uh, students evacuated there at that time. Please move on. Final project I would like to mention. We are preparing for Venice, for Karar Museum. This is Palladio and Russia, from Morocco to modernism. This is very interesting and very original concept. When uh, there was a suggestion to make for this year Russia, Italy, when there is architectural Biennale in Venice, Venice, and again uh, Natalia Samolenka, who is here today, suggested that project. I immediately referred to Arkady Palitov who is the uh, curator of Italian graphics in Hermitage. He is one of the brightest professionals in our profession, and I suggested him to become a curator of uh, this exhibition. Please uh, skip some slides uh, in order to make it clear what we happen at the end. Uh, as a result, we had a very original project that speaks not only about the tradition of the Russian architects that they followed the ideas of Palario. And during the work over this exhibition, it became clear that what is considered to be absolutely Russian style or advantage or Russian manner uh, that brilliantly and uh, ironically described in Gogol in the Dead Souls when he describes Manila manner. But now we see that, in fact, it's simply the transformation of Villa Rotonda Palladio. And uh, we draw this line up to Stalin period, uh, finalizing with Zhultovsky, who really was a great fan of Palladio. And it seems to me that this project that I represented recently in Venice and that caused huge interest from Italian professionals assessed the rivalry of this approach and they said that they wouldn't take this risk to make the project this way. I think it shows the direction which we are moving towards and once again emphasizes the fact that we want to make exhibition projects that would cause strong and maybe controversial reaction, but they would be made in order to people to come there, to see, to think, to discuss, and maybe something would change in their mindset, in their positions, and become much clearer. Thank you.